Everybody stand up for a second. Look at each other and say, man, you're looking good. Man, you look looking good. You look like a bill of the Spirit today. Tell them you're going to go out and do something after church. you got something to do. you got stuff to do. Hallelujah. Okay, um, just from my point of view, my opinion, it's not in the Bible. Well, I guess it is in the Bible, actually. The church... Um, it's supposed to be like heaven, am I correct? It's not quiet in heaven. That's right. At all. Okay? Um, hello, hello, hello. Right. Is that the Holy Spirit? All right, you guys can sit down. All right. So if you guys see me um, start to do this, we have family coming to town for a lacrosse tournament so Friday night I was up till one o'clock and last night I was up till like 12 30 and when I get done today I gotta drive back to Reno get my family and head to Idaho so it's gonna be a fun day are you guys excited today cool. what do you want to talk about Jesus, Jesus? give us the word of God the word of God all right, well, everybody open up your iPads or iPhones. And uh, you know what? How about this? How about if I just uh, text you the message and we can all eat? No, thank you. We'll go to breakfast. All right. So can I just, can I just talk to you for a little bit? Yes. Um, give you a little, a little history of what's been going on and, and where God's been taking me. And so I, ha I actually have... I'm going to do both services. I'm going to start them out the same way. But one of them I'm going to go left and one of them I'm going to go right as the Holy Spirit leads. But my, my congregation is used to, I, I don't have, okay, here's point one, point two, point three. Um, I just go all over the place. And they're used to reaching out and grabbing it when they hear it and holding on to it. So you think you guys can do that? Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> All right, where do I start? See, th this is kind of a weird message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle and work both ways. Does that work with you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right. So recently our church, I don't know if some of you know our church, we were, uh, we had uh, great aspirations and still do. And God led us to be downtown. At the time we went downtown, uh, it was our vision to just go down right in the middle of town and, and just reach out to people. And so we had, uh, we probably had 130 people in our congregation. <coughs> and we had all these people that were excited about the vision. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. And we got down there. And uh, all of a sudden they were right in the middle of it. And they were like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that this is the place for us. Yeah. So here we move into this building that's six thousand dollars a month, and now we're down to thirty people, thirty-five people, and also God led me. I've been doing construction my whole life, construction, pastoring. My wife is a um, assistant principal at a school. My daughter's in dance five nights a week. And so he led me to step out in faith and trust him and quit doing construction. Yeah. Wow. And at that time, of course, the tide went. Yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing is, God is so good, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's, he's just an amazing God. And if, if it's not scary, it's probably not God. <laughs> if, if, Say you're, that. if you're not walking in faith, it's not him. I mean, you know, he'll let you tiptoe through life if you want, but there's so, so much more for you. So one of the things I've been praying for for years is mentors. Someone, that, someone that's over me that can, you know, tell me, hey, you're doing this wrong. You know, I've had people I can talk to. You walk up and say, hey, yeah, I got a question for you. I've had that. I thought I had mentors. 
that God was showing me. I did have mentors. So I got a couple people in uh, my life. I asked them to mentor me, and then another guy came up and volunteered. <laughs> and uh, it was a blessing. Praise oh, God. what a blessing. Uh, yeah, and a great blessing. And so the first time I met with this one mentor, I was uh, all excited, and I get in there, and he just calls me in on the carpet. <laughs> and I was sitting there going, <laughs> yeah, I like this. I've been waiting for years for this. So we had uh, we had a big food ministry. We were doing like four thousand pounds of food a week to four neighborhoods. Um, I was trying to find leaders that could help me out. They would volunteer, and it would either be, yeah, I got your back, I'll do it, and then they'd show up for a week or. Or I would get the people that, well, I'm in charge now, and I'm going to say what's, you know, you, you just could I couldn't find anybody. And we were having, on Sunday mornings, we were having our pantry afterwards, and then we started, we're right downtown. We started getting God's chosen. <laughs> A lot of them. And they're like stealing paintings off the walls and and I'll be speaking and they'll get up and walk in front of me or I'm, I'm actually giving a message and they'll come up and start talking to me. <laughs> and uh, it, it just total crazy. It was chaos. And a lot of the people that were used to wanted a regular church service were leaving. So I went to speak to one of my mentors and he said, you know, Pastor Kerr, I have a, I have a, um, a pantry in my church. He said, but I had nothing to do with it. Nothing. If I have to go straight some out every once in a while, I'll do that. Um, but other than that, if the people that were running would quit tomorrow, I wouldn't have a pantry. I said, oh, okay, all right. So, and I'm not, the, the, my mentors aren't talking to each other. So then I went to the, to my other mentor, and he said, you know what, Pastor Kurt, he said, if I had all the money I needed, if I had all the help I needed, I wouldn't have a pension. <laughs> he said, you're called to preach the word and teach. And he showed, he showed me a vision he had of a broken sprinkler that was squirting out in the street so his lawn wasn't getting watered. And he said, that's you. He said, your lawn's not getting watered, and it's time because your focus is in the wrong place. So what I want you to do is to quit your pantry right now. I've been doing it for 12 years. <laughs> and that was my heart to get it. To, so what we did is we took food out into the neighborhoods and, and I was like, oh, I, don't, I, have, I'll have, I have to pray about it, <laughs> right? And then God told me, he said, why are you praying about it? You asked for a mentor who told you what to do. Now you need to do it. And I was like, okay. I mean, I was ready to negotiate. Because we, you know, we, we started one park 12 years ago. And uh, I just loved that park. And the people just, I mean, we, a lot of them we'd known for that long. And uh, so I was like, okay, what if I would go in and ask them, well, how about if we just keep this... And God said, no, that's not what he told you. So I pray. I did a lot of praying. And finally, I said, all right, Lord, I'll quit. And what happened was, after all my praying and no answers, um, I called a friend of mine and asked her. I said, could you pray for, pray for me? You know, she, I have a couple ladies in the church that, that pray for me all the time. And uh, you guys pray for your pastor? Yes. Absolutely. You know what? Yeah. You need, he needs it. We need it. Pastors need it, man. I bet you guys miss him, don't you? Yes. <laughs> My congregation loves it when I'm gone because they think they don't have to show up. <laughs> they think I won't find out about it. <laughs> so, um, I did what he said. And then... He started, they just started helping me and just pouring into me and, and not actually like, oh, can I help you with a question, whatever. They're, these guys are like, we want to see you succeed because you're part of our family. 
And all of a sudden, I'm not getting used to this. I'm not used to this. I'm like, hey, I'm the one that helps people. I'm the one that does things. I'm the one that's, and it was I, 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 you know, and I was not, I was not used to all this help. And then we had another church, there's another church that moved in to our building to help us with the rent. And they were doing all kinds of stuff and, you know, they're serving us. I'm like, I'm not serving them. I go, God, this is very humbling. And he said, that's right. What's the opposite of humility? Right? That's right. You got pride. God will show you things in your life that um, that are there. That you, you know, we. How many here have some issues? Oh. Okay. All right. I, I'm going to tell you something. I, I'll put. I, I put both hands up, but I can't. I got. But you know, we have issues we don't know about. And it's funny. The ones that we know about. He wants to deal with the other ones. He said, oh, you already know about that. Yeah, you already know about that one, but let's talk about this. But anyway, the reason I'm, I'm doing all that is to show you that um, when, when we step out in, in, in obedience and um, do what he asks us to do, then things start happening. Amen. Things start happening. You know, there's a, like a weight that is lifted off your shoulders. Yeah. Um, I, I felt free for the first time in a long time. And guess what happened? I started really hearing from God. I started really hearing from God, in, in, even in my quiet time. So I, I'm going to share this with you. Um, you guys like to dig into the Word? Yes. You guys, like, you, you guys hear about like the Hebrew and the Greek out here, right? Yes. You do. All right. So I've always had a love for the Hebrew culture. The one thing that um, God blessed me with was even when I was in school, I, as a kid, I loved history, I loved culture. Couldn't stand math. Right. And then I was a carpenter. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny is math's not the same these days. I have a 10-year-old daughter. It's not even close. So my daughter in third grade, um, she's 10 now. I started late. She was born when I was 50. <laughs> You've heard of Abraham, he was a hunter, so you're on Abraham. So anyway, she brought this math home. See, I do a lot of a lot of these, just to warn you. Squirrel. And uh, I couldn't help her. Third grade man. And I said, well, baby, when you get to fractions, I'm in construction. When you get to fractions, I got this. Yeah. And she brought her fractions home and I was like, what is that? <laughs> Sorry. So where was I going? <laughs> we have issues. Yeah. We have issues. <laughs> Hebrew. Hebrew. Right. Greek. Right. And you know what? And so that's the culture thing. I, I love that. And a, a long time ago, I used to really get into the Hebrew letters and stuff. And and so I, I had time to get back into doing that again. And God will just really open up to you. When you're hungry, you know what? There's so much in here. There's so much food in here that you'll never, ever get all of it. But God will lead you to what he wants you to eat at the time. But you have to, you have to go after it. We have to go. We have to dig and want to. And we also have to know this book, this word, because it's a lot easier for him to speak to us, and I'll show you why. So I was reading one night in Psalm 34, and uh, I was reading where he talked, he, he called his people his saints. And I, you know, immediately, how many times, you read the Bible, what, 20, 30 times? And I, that was never in there before. I didn't know he called them saints in the Old yeah. Testament, you know? I didn't get that. And so, of course, my curiosity, or the Holy Spirit, I wonder what that word means. So, I looked it up, and, and the Hebrew word was kadosh. You guys know what that word means, right? It, it means holy. And I was thinking, wait a minute, this is the Old Testament, and God calls his saints holy in the Old Testament. 
I said, and Jesus hadn't even come yet. So then I went on this path. God led me on this path. And if you, if you haven't read your word, he can't lead you on the path because you've never been there before. And so he reminded me in uh, Leviticus. Leviticus 11.44, I believe, where God said, I'm holy. I'm not used to these leashes. I like, I like to get up. So God says, I'm holy, so you be holy. Now, is that not a lot of pressure? <laughs> is that not pressure? I mean, God's holy, and he, this holy God is telling me, I got to be holy. I ain't making it. Are you guys making it? No. I'm like, that, that, God, that's just too much pressure for me. And so, it made me start thinking, see, God's really cool. Yeah. So he said, you be holy. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about Genesis 1, when he said, light be, or let there be light, light be. So, I went to Genesis 1 and looked up the word for light to be. And the word, you, got, you guys got to get this. This is really, really important. God, help us get this in our hearts. Help us get this in our hearts and see yeah. who we are. So the word was Hayah. And so I went back to Leviticus and looked up the word for you be holy, and guess what the word was? It was Hayah. He wasn't saying you gotta be holy because I'm holy. What he was saying, be holy. He spoke it over us, just like he spoke it over creation. He said be holy. And what he did was put the holiness in us. So guess what? There's no more pressure. Because he said he made us holy. But wait, there's more. So in that word, hayah, um, in the Hebrew letters, there's a, there's a hey, a vav, and a hey. And hey, the letter H, is... It designates the presence or the breath of God. Yod points to God. It's, it's the, the little tiniest, smallest letter that it, it points to God, and it means our connection with Him. And it, it, all, of, all the old Hebrew um, prophets that were really big prophets, their, their names all started with the Yod. Jeremiah, Yehosh, Yahshua, um, Ezekiel, they're, they're, all started with the God. But anyway, so there's the, the God's presence, God himself, and then God's presence and the sandwich in between. And so um, I said, well, that, you know, that's pretty cool. And then I started thinking, or God, I didn't, I didn't start thinking. The Holy Spirit started thinking for me. And, I, and then I, I thought of another word. Jehovah. Jehovah. Mm -hmm. as a hey and yod and a hey. Oh. So I went and looked up Jehovah, which comes from the root word Hayah. Hayah. Hayah is Jehovah's name. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so God led me to when Moses was at the burning bush. And Moses was like, he was telling Moses, go get the Israelites. They're in Egypt. And he said, they're not going to listen to me. Who should I tell them sent me? And that's when he said, I am who I am. God's name. I am who I am. Hayah. A sure a yaw. Mm. All right, are you getting this? Yeah. So God 
gave us his name. Be, Hayah. Be holy, Hayah. That's how he made us holy. He gave us his name. We carry the name of God with us. It's in us. He sees us as his son. We have that. There should be some shouting. Come on. Come on. You, you know what? You need to write that down and pray about it because it's absolutely amazing when you start following these trails and find out what all these words mean. And when he's, he's not just speaking life, he's given us his name. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying, well, I'm God. No. No, but his presence... His name. It's like you give your uh, give your son your name. They can carry your name. We carry the name of God. And what is he? He's a creator. Yes. Yeah. So we have that in us. Yes, we do. That's what he's called us to do. Is I heard the way this one guy put it. Is he says that the creator created us to be creative. Yes. I heard a story recently about. Um, a major catastrophe thing that was going on, which I don't even know if, I'm, if I was even supposed to hear it. Um, but this guy was praying, and he said, "God, you got to do something about this. This, you know, thousands of people are going to die. I'm going to trick myself before the end of the day." <laughs> and God told him, "I gave the earth to you to do it. You handle it. I gave you the authority." I gave you my name. I gave wow. you the creativeness. And if you don't pray, yeah, thousands of people are going to die. Mm -hmm. And he prayed. And he got out of wow. So that, this is, I, I think sometimes that we really just don't get who we are. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get the authority that we have. We don't get what God's given us to do. If what, what do you think would happen if the church got it? <laughs> oh, <okay. Huh? clears throat> you know, and I know some people um, of, of another church that are, I was talking to him and, um, about some things, about the unity things we're doing, and he was going, well, you know, he said, God's not in denominational churches. Huh. Oh, yes, that broke my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And he had, I, I, I was like, I didn't want to, what I wanted to say is you better be really careful how you talk about God's saints. You gotta be, well, yeah, you guys all, you just agree on Jesus. Oh, man. It broke my heart. Because you know what? I remember one time, my little brother, he's a, um, he's, he lives up in Idaho. That's where we're going today. Um, he's Baptist. And I was sitting in, uh, we like the Baptists, right? That's right, we love the Baptists. We just have to get out of church earlier to beat them to the buffet. <laughs> and I was sitting in the church one time, and, you know, we're used to having Holy Spirit run walk amongst us, right? right. And I was sitting there, I was just, and this was way earlier in my Christian walk, so forgive me. And I was like, God, why are you not here? You're just not here. And sitting in those old pews, the Holy Spirit hit me like a ton of bricks and said, I'm here too. Right on. I was like, oh, okay. sorry, Lord. Sorry. And so it breaks my heart. And you know, until we get to where these, there's a lot of churches out there like that too. But well, we're not a we're a non-denominational church. We <laughs> so we are the church. We're all the church, and we and for we have to get. We're supposed to get together. Yes. We're all supposed to. Once we know who who we are, and, um, and you, then what, you know what happens is when when you sit down and someone, hey, will you pray for this? Will you pray for my friend? And when you sit down and you start praying. I'm going to get an answer. Because, mm -hmm. because Hayah, I have that name. God gave me the authority. 
And, and I think the reason that we're not getting a lot of uh, a lot of answers to our prayers is because we're not really believing them. Right. We're not believing who we are and what God's done for us and what He's put in us and how He sees us. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, extend your hands toward the burden and pray for Because now it's when I turn left or right. I'm not sure which way I'm going. Okay. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. It's kind of like yeah. Any prayer for what? Yeah. 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 Answer? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Preach. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go back. Um, what time do I, do I have to go? Until you're done. 10 30. That's what's What time is it? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. I got till 10.30? No. You don't have to use all that time, bro. Use it all. <laughs> the next one starts at 10.30. Get till 10. Okay. Yeah. Just go until all right. God says it's enough. Quit thinking about it. Let the Holy Spirit take you there. Amen. <laughs> we trust Him. The Holy Spirit doesn't know how to tell time. <laughs> Actually, do you know... You know, how many here are ready for Jesus to come back? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not me. Do you know <laughs> that he would already have come yep. if he could figure out all our graphs and charts and timetables about him coming back? He'd already come back. <laughs> <laughs> so open, up the, open up the Proverbs. Three. You guys like to you guys like to study? Yeah. Yeah? You like to read read about science? Yeah. You know what science is so cool? Just more and more and more it just proves God. It Amen. just does. It's amazing. I was reading where um, liberal scientists are saying that they can prove global warming. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wait a minute, you're a scientist and you can't even tell the difference between a man and a woman and you're going to prove global warming? <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Yeah, that's all right. It's okay. We're worried about it. Yeah. More than about it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, northern Nevada. Now it's, it's even more yeah. like that, isn't it? Oh my God. So Proverbs 3.11 says, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, That's right. nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. We don't like hearing those ones. Those ones are rough. Now you can pop on over to Hebrews 12. So I know what a lot of people would be saying is, um, well, Pastor Kurt, you're getting into the Old Testament. You're getting into the religious part. You're getting into the law. We're not under the law anymore. <clears throat> so the reason I'm going here is it's something that God showed me. Um, so as I told you, I've been hearing more from God now that I've been obedient, right? Yes. Does God reward obedience? Yes. Not really. I mean, you give your kids reward when they do a good job, right? But I heard this and it made a lot of sense. It's not about you have to be good and do what I say in order for me to reward you. Right, right. So it's not really about obedience. But what happens when we're obedient? We're stepping out in what? Faith. faith. That makes sense. Does God reward faith? Yes. That's the only thing God rewards is faith. That's good. What pleases God? 
Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Not 95% chance, not maybe <laughs> once a month. It's, it's impossible to please him without faith. And so as I told you, the more I've stepped out in obedience, the more I've been hearing, the more God's been speaking to me. And sometimes it drives me nuts. <laughs> You're, God speaks to me when I'm driving all the time. <laughs> All the time I'm driving and he gives me this great word and I'm like, what? You know I'm going to forget this. I can't write it down. <laughs> he loves doing that to me. But he, once he puts it in, it's in there. And then he'll bring it back up. So how many in this room would love to hear from God? Loud and clear all the time. Right? Right? There's one thing that comes with it though. Something I learned a long time ago, when I when when God put outreach and, and the lost on my heart, one of my prayers was, God, let me see people through your eyes. How many have prayed that prayer? God help me to love people like you love people. Come on, everyone in here has prayed that, right? Yeah. Okay. But something comes with that. Mm -hmm. You get to feel he'll do he'll answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. And he'll let you feel his love. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. But with it, you get to feel his pain too. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. right. mm -hmm. it comes with it. Yeah. It's the whole package. So it's the same with God, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear you speak to me all the time. How many know that it's not always gonna be He's a good boy? <laughs> yeah. You're doing so good. I love you. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Look at the way you did that. Oh. Does he do that? Yeah, he does. He loves us. He loves watching us. I know I got a 10 year old girl. I love watching her. But also when I see mistakes, I got to correct her. You know, part of the new grace doctrine has been that God loves me just how I am. Yeah. That's not true. No. God loves us in spite yes. of how we are. <laughs> Bless you. He loves us in spite of how we are. He does see us perfected at the end. But he, you think that he's going to find you a mess? And leave you that way? No. no. Mm -hmm. He loves us in spite of how we are. Yeah. So, he is going to start speaking. If you want to hear God's voice, you get to hear it all. You get to hear it all. He's going to tell you, you're such a good kid. But by the way, yeah. <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> but he does it with love. So, um, as I said, I told you my little pride thing earlier that he was showing me that I had some pride in my life. And how many know that pride is what kills? Yeah. And we don't want any pride. And there's pride in us sometimes. We're human. We're partially human. We can't say, well, I'm only human. Because we're not only human anymore. We're partially human. We're a spirit with a body and soul. We're not a body with a spirit or a soul with a spirit. We're a spirit being. Because our spirit has been born alive. Born again. And how many know the spirit's changed, but we still got stuff to deal with, with the mind and the body. Yeah. So he pointed out the uh, he pointed out the pride thing to me. <coughs> and then, well, let's let's read Hebrews and I'll, I'll go on. Hebrews, Hebrews twelve. My other Bible is at church. I got a Bible at church with big letters. <laughs> okay. Five. And have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Wait a minute, did I just, didn't I just read that? Yeah. In the Old Testament? Yeah. 
Well, what's it doing here in the New Testament? Same God. It's the same God. He never changes. And Paul is reading the Old Testament. They didn't have the New Testament. They, they read the Old Testament. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which we have all become partakers, then you are what? Illegitimate, Illegitimate and what? Not sons. Not sons. Wow. So if any of us are sitting here saying, you know what, God never rebukes me or changes me, I got some bad news for you. I got some really bad news for you. You need to start hearing God. Because it says you're not a son, that you're not one of his. Like I said, he doesn't want to leave you in the mess. You know, we're all going through a sanctification process. How many here have grown? Since they got saved. Come on. Huh? Come on. Isn't, and isn't it awesome? And it's funny how you'll be going through something. Um, let me pick something. Let's say dealing with somebody who drives you nuts. <laughs> Does anybody here still have those? Uh, ah! Oops. Oh. I guess they're not going to breakfast with us. And early on in your walk, how did you handle it? And then all of a sudden, one day, it's just in one day, you'll go, something will come up and you'll go, wow. I handled that pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as you say that, you're going to get knocked down Back again down, because yeah, you got yeah. proud. Yeah. <laughs> but um, God grows us. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're in a process. So we are going to be... He's going to deal with things in our lives. Because our inheritance doesn't start when we get to heaven. Our inheritance is as soon as we gave... Our life to the Lord, that's when our inheritance started. And God has so many things for us to do right now. So many things. Um, that's That was my right turn. I might even squeak over there a bit and come back. But so then God started um, talking to me. I thought, okay, we got that we got that, uh, that pride thing. And I, I'm sure there's more hidden somewhere. You know, it pops up. The cool thing is, though, when these things start popping up now, instead of not, you, then you notice them. Yes. Oh, I better take care of that. And that's good. How I many you know that's good? And he started dealing with me about, um, what's the word I can think of right now? Intimidation. Being intimidated. And how many know that's not always people? But you can be intimidated by people, intimidated by your boss, intimidated by your pastor, intimidated by um, people that are, like, you put way up here. You know, I, I'm, I've always been intimidated by people that were a lot smarter than me, because I was, well, before I got the, I got the, the wisest being in the world living in me now. But I mean, I was Forrest Gump before, okay? <laughs> oh, I am no a smart man. <laughs> and I, I mean, I was. I didn't do that great in school, but now I got the wise one. And you know, I got to tell you what, what I'm doing right now is I'm reading books like on quantum theory, yeah. quantum physics. Do I get it? No. <laughs> I'm getting some of it. But if you, how many know if you read what you know, you ain't never going to learn. Right. you got to step out. I listen to these um, what they call them? apologists, Rabbi Zacharias yeah. And, yeah. and some of these guys, and they're, you know, brilliant minds, but I listen to them. And the more you listen and the more you read these things, the more you grow. Uh -huh. You know, so 
I was intimidated by this kind of thing. How about this one? I have, uh, I have had back problems since 1977. I've had sleeping problems since I was a little kid. You know what God showed me? I was intimidated by them. No. <clears throat> I was giving them more power. And I still am. I'm getting there. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Or I'd be about a thousand in heaven. Um, that's, that's intimidation. That we can be intimidated by these things. And what is that? What is intimidation? What's a short, really short word for intimidation? Fear. Yeah. Whoa, you guys are on it! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You guys have been listening to Rabbi Zacharias, haven't you? <laughs> so, it's fear. And God has not given us a spirit of Fear. That's right. Power, love, and a sound mind. And, and so that what does that tell you? That fear is a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. And so God is working with me now. Something I, I knew I was intimidated by some things, but not. I didn't know I was intimidated by back problems. I didn't know that I had fear or of insomnia. I didn't know I had fear of all that. But God was showing me that that's what I had. And, and how many know you can't pray against something, you can't work on something if you don't know it's there? Right. It's the same with your Bible. Faith is knowledge. You can't have faith in something you don't know, know about. That's why you got to read about it. Because you can't have faith if you don't read it and understand it. So God was showing me that I had in, in, intimidation. And i got to tell you what. It was like those two things, and I know there's so much more to come. <laughs> those two things was like taking bricks off my shoulders. Bricks, yeah. So God chastises us, and it's freedom. Yeah. It's freedom. And where I got I got this from, I was listening to a, a pastor, and he was uh, he was telling his congregation. I got a message for you tonight, and uh, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable for you. And I started thinking, I've, how many times have I had to give a message where God has said, all right, I need you to speak about this this weekend. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> But I want to tell them, you're doing a great job. <laughs> so awesome. Look at you. Look at you. are doing so good. That's what I want to tell them. But you got to be obedient and tell them. So I started realizing that, is this how you guys do this? I feel like I'm in a rodeo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to, but it's been a long time. So, this intimidation thing, it, it, ha it has to go. Yes, God told you to deliver something to your people. The past, oh, right. Uh, the pastor says I got yeah. something to say. Like I said, I, I haven't slept lately, and uh, I got to go to Idaho. But, um, thank you so much. I need that. I need that. Matter of fact, why don't you come up here? <laughs> <laughs> Now I lost it again. You got to preach the message to the people. So, what he was saying was there should never be an uncomfortable message. I should get excited about it, about preaching it, and you guys should be excited about hearing it because it's freedom. Yes. That's what it does. Our correction brings us freedom. And I start realizing when I correct my daughter on certain things, well, why am I correcting her? Because she makes me mad? 
No, no. because she needs to learn. Mm -hmm. And there, and I know that in the future, if she keeps doing certain things, it will get her in trouble. Right now, um, I have a lot of faith and trust in my daughter because we um, we speak over her and, and let her know who she is. And right now, my wife is teaching in a, a Title I school. I don't know if you know what that is. Um, but it's where all the trouble kids are. Am I on camera? Yes, you are. <laughs> um, my wife's been in the school district for 25, 26 years, and this is the first time she's been punched and kicked by a kid. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very rough, rough um, school. And uh, my wife decided to take my daughter out of a really nice school and put her in that school. Mm. I was really against it. Um, but you know what? My daughter's been a light there. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. And so, you know, she's only 10. That's a big step of faith. But you know what? As much as I pray over my daughter and as much as I talk to her, um, and as much as I know God's protecting her, you know why? Because I got a yaw in me, mm. and when I pray, it's going to happen. Yeah. So I believe in my prayers, and I believe that she's going to be okay there. And she, she has been a light to that school. But God, um, he'll, he'll do these things for us. And it's, and it's a great thing. So nobody should ever be uncomfortable. How many times um, I've heard this, where... Um, Someone would leave the service and say, he was talking about me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was talking about me. And you know what? Guess what? He probably was. Because if the shoe fits, you know, God has a message. And it's, and it might, it's never for just one person. How many know a lot of times when I'm speaking, it's for me. It's for me. I'll be preaching, and I got this word, and I'm preaching, and I go, <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> that was good. I hope somebody else got it. But I got to tell you that God showed me, um, he showed me a picture of all this as he was teaching me about, about being chastened and, and spoken to. And like I said, the first time I got went in to see my mentor, man, he was all over. And then a couple other times, he was pretty much on me. But you know what? What, what freedom it is. And I can tell you, since we shut our pantry down, our church services have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is there. Like I said, the Holy Spirit's always there. But the Holy when when you host in God's glory, like I know this church does, because every time I step in here, I know the glory of God is here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And we got away from that. Because the pantry got too important. The food and the problems and the But when you step back, there's such freedom. When God shows you this is what you're doing, what you're doing wrong, and you, you do what he says, man, the freedom comes. <coughs> and as I was meditating on that. You guys know about meditating, right? Yeah. It's not the home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a bad anyway. Home is just move spelled backwards. <laughs> we're, we're not trying to be one with our inner chakra. <laughs> but, um, Meditating is, you guys all meditate. Yes. You know that, right? Yes. When you got a bill that you can't pay, and that's all the only thing you can find. That's what that is. That's meditating. Yes. So instead of meditating on that, meditate on the Word. Amen. But anyway, so I was meditating on this, and, and God showed me a picture. How many people here have Facebook? Yeah. How many people here watch the... Um, National Geographic or the um, the Animal Planet or those things. Okay, how many times have you seen recently 
or there's some guys in a boat out fishing, having a good old time, and then they look down and here's a turtle caught in this fishing net. Yeah. And they bring it on board and they, they clip the net and, you know, holding the turtle and they, and they finally get it set free or like a whale that's caught in a big net mm -hmm. or a deer that's stuck in a fence. I actually saw one the other day where a bobcat was stuck in a trap and the idiot went to he let it go. Yep. I was like, man, you're a fool. <laughs> but he did. I saw one where there was a, a big hawk that was caught, had a bunch of cockle birds all stuck up in it and mm -hmm. they grabbed this hawk and held it by the head and pulled all these things off and set it free. Does that tell you anything? Mm -hmm. That's what God's doing with us. Yeah. Yeah. He's clipping the nets yeah. and the cockle birds. And, and the Bible says, stay away from anything that binds you or, or entangles you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. So his chastening of us is actually freeing us. He showed me that picture of that's what he's doing with us. When we got this stuff that's in our life, and we might think it's okay, or we don't know about it, or we think, you know what, you know, I'll get this, I'll get this. But once you get set free from it, what a feeling. What a feeling it is. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. How many here need to be set free from some stuff? Yeah. I'm not going to chew you out. I'll let him do it. He's <laughs> talking for a long time here, don't you? I got another hour. <laughs> no pressure. Now, we get done by 9 30 lots of times. So. Yeah, so anyway, um, so that this is just. Yes, sir? I'll come up. You'll come up and speak? <laughs> oh, for prayer? Yeah, for oh, prayer. you bet. I'm going to lay hands on all of you. Yeah. No, no, just go ahead. I'll call you up when I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, um, fine. Yeah, I'm gonna lay some hands today because I gotta tell you something. I uh, I uh, went. How many have heard of Scott Webb? He's a Word of Faith guy. He was at Pastor Oberg's church. He was there uh, a year ago, and I heard him, and I was going, "Man, this man is amazing. He's a teacher," and he gave me a great word. And so he was here just this last week, and. Uh, he gave me another great word, and he prayed for me. And you know, I—I I don't know. Some people get to see angels, and oh, and I saw the vision of the Lord, and I, was like, oh, man, I wish I could do that. But actually, when he was praying for me, I thought he—he he stuck his head around and blew in my ear. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, well, I opened my eye and he was still right here and there was nobody next to me. Huh. And I was like, oh my gosh. That was the wind of God. That was the Amen. Holy Spirit breathing. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. And he laid hands on me. And how many here have been hit by the Spirit? Yeah. Everybody, hopefully. Everybody? Yeah. <laughs> I got hit by the Spirit. And it was like nothing I've ever felt before. I never felt that before. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been spirit-filled. I remember I used to do street ministry, and I'd go pray for somebody. And I'd be on the streets, and I'd pray for somebody, and I'd finally get done, and I'd walk away, and the spirit would hit me. And I'd go, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I must have forgot something. I left too early. And it happened time after time after time. And then one time I had to go to the hospital um, to pray for somebody, and it was in the... Veterans Hospital in the intensive care unit, and they have their own intensive care waiting room. And uh, I went in to pray for this person. Well, there's this big family in there, you know, cousins, and nephews, aunts, you know, the whole family. And they were in there crying. And so I walked through, and I went and prayed for that person. And I came back out, and God let me sit down. So I sat down for a few minutes and was listening to them. And... Uh, Finally, I said, hey, you know what, you guys, I'm a pastor. Can I pray for you? And they're like, oh, no, please, yeah, please let us pray for us. And their son, had, they, they told him that he had shot himself. And so they're, that's not my son. You know, they're all this. And they're like, well, will he still go to heaven? And so I got to minister to him for a while. And I got to pray for all of them. And then I left. I said, 
I was, I was done. So I walked out the door, and the Holy Spirit hit me so hard. I was up against the wall, and I could hard, hardly walk. And I said, I did it again. I go, God, did I leave too early? What, what, what? And he said, No, I just love you. <laughs> I just love you. And he'll do that. He does squeeze and he'll cheat um, But so the Holy Spirit came on me the other night, and it was, I never felt anything like this. It was different. So I went back the second night. And I was talking to the pastor there, and see, I got home and I told my wife all about this. Yeah, I, this was different. I don't know what it was. And so I told her about it. Well, my wife went with me the next night, and then Pastor Dave came up and he was talking to me about, yeah, last night was crazy. He goes, man, I got hit by the Spirit, and I never felt anything like that. It was different. And my wife looked at me, and I said, that's exactly what I told my wife. So... You know the um, story in the Bible where Elijah gets taken up in the whirlwind? Yeah. yeah. And Elisha wants a double portion. And so the mantle falls. And he goes and grabs that mantle. What does he do? He says, all right. Smacks the water and says, where's the God of Elijah? Show me. So I'm ready to lay hands on people. I'm ready to, I'm ready to, I'm ready to see what this new ammunition I got is going to do. I'm ready to do some impartation and praying. I'm ready to check it out. I want to see where the God of Elijah is. Amen. So you guys want prayer? Yes. 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 How many want to be free from um, some things that are holding you back? Amen. How many want to hear more from God? That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. You know what? I don't care about anything else. Yeah. You know, this, this being set free stuff, that's going to come from hearing Him. That's right. yeah. The direction I'm going in life, that's going to come from Him. Everything is going to come by hearing from Him more and getting to know Him more. That's, that's all I want. You know, they, they say there's two things we got to do is know God and make God known. You know what? I, I want to know God. Amen. He already knows my heart. I'll make Him known. That, that comes with it. All that comes with hearing from Him and, and just having Him in your life and speaking to you all the time. So if you would like prayer, if you want um, more... How many want more? Yeah. How many have enough? I'm good. No. Uh, yeah, I got it. I'm, I'm, you know, I heard so, you know, all, all this growth comes from tests and trials, and, and um, we're learning a lot. And I heard this one guy say, you know what, God, I'll come to heaven just as stupid as I am. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't need any more tests and trials. I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> just take me up. <laughs> Apparently, he had been going through a lot of tests and trials. Anyway, if you want to come up um, for prayer, now you can come up. See, now this, see, this is, now, see, this is what it's about. I was at a, 